on and you know YouTube. All right, uh, Martin, do you have again? So it might be that we clinched up and he's under my arms, yeah, and his head is unavailable again. So or the head butt just weren't working or whatever. So from here. I want to try and get, again, a forearm in onto one side of his neck, the opposite side of his neck, yeah? If that makes sense. So I don't want to like, do that. I'm going to either swim my arm across here, or in this case, with the way our legs are set up, I would want to get my left hand on, on here, my left forearm. You always want to sort of fend off the lead hand, because the idea of it is that it's setting you up for one of those as well, yeah? So my arms are available, but the head isn't working, so what I'm going to do, and let's say I can't lean back, so if you get the arms a bit higher up my back, there we go, so something more like this, and uh, move your head over there, so you have to go into a weird position, that's it. So from here, you give, squeeze me a little bit, so there, like, there's no, it's not easily accessible. I can't just lean back and put it in there, but I'm going to lean back and try my best. And what I'm also going to do, is with this hand, is doing what's called a cross face. I'm basically going to take my hand, maybe with a closed fist, but in this case, because this gap is so small, I'm going to use this kind of shape. And I'm going to swim it across his face, and he's not going to like that. And that's part of the incentive for him to, to move back. Because if I just want to go like, oh, please let me put my arm there. No, but instead it's going to be like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> right across his face. And then he goes, ah, you know, he doesn't like it. And then I'm here, and the same thing again. Beans of cheek. And then we, we've broken this, and then we can go back to our. Could you, thing. could you, when he had his head on your shoulder, could you hit him? With. Uh, so both your arms are free. Yeah. And like his head's there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Could yeah, you just? So you can't. You really... notice, so I mean, the, the the closest thing I could hit him with is something like a uh, hook or a hammer fist. Yeah, yeah. If you look at my range of motion, it's fucking zero. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, like, don't get me wrong, you might, you might not like that, and, and it is, if that's his nose, that's my palm, you know, you can generate, a, you know, enough force to, to, to smash his nose, maybe, but when he's wrestling me about everywhere, so you sort of drag me around a little bit, you know, I lose sort of everything, yeah, biomechanically. But yeah. What I don't lose is the ability to just sort of swim my arm in there yeah. and, and brush past his face. And what's great about this stuff is it works in, in for the cage as well, like for sports fighting. You just swim the glove in there and go in. Now, just a little word as well on this position is what is available also is the eye. Okay, we haven't looked at that yet. I want to look at it very briefly at the end. Is that I would have access to his eye probably. The thing with eyes is that he can yeah, he can sort of get out of that quite quickly. And I'm starting to lose appreciation for eye attacks more and more, the more I experiment with these gross motor big movements. Because these things just work, they're easier to apply, they require less accuracy, all I have to do is swim my arm in there and push him away. It's not as violent as a thumb in the eye, right? But the thing with the, with the thumb in the eye is, I've got to get the thing first. We're going to find it, and if he doesn't want that in his eye, he just has to move his head, and that's not going in there. And then maybe I've got a headbutt there, and all of that, but again, if he's ragging me around, finding that, oh, this is just fucking shit, yeah? It's like, you know, and you're focusing, what, I'm, what I've, keeps coming to mind, and the more I, I've been pressure testing this last year, is big shit wins. So this is small shit, trying to find the eye, eh, twist an ear, all this kind of stuff, small things. And yeah, they're more violent, and this is why people think, how intuitively think that, oh, that's going to be the one, thumb in the eye, ah. yeah, because it's more violent, in theory, like it feels and sounds more violent. But it's really hard to do, and it's not always as effective as you think, people just kind of take that shit. Whereas a big movement, like if I say, well, just swing your arm across his face and then and sort of straighten your arm out, it's like, hmm, what, what sounds more effective? Thumb in the eye or forearm across his neck. You know, it's sort of the thumb in the eye sounds really bad, but 
what's higher percentage in terms of what works more often is the big stuff, big shit wins. And people, the other, the other thing is that people don't appreciate the violence of the big stuff. So, you know, having someone brush their hand past your face and then push you away like that, when you do that with violent intent, like, to do, in, again, in the context of self-defense, the other person feels that and they feel the violence of it. When you're trying to put your thumb in their eye, all they're feeling is you struggling to get your thumb in their eye, and it's quite shocking and all of that, like, oh, that's not nice, and maybe they'll move. But when you actually swing your arm across their face, you actually push them with, like, across their neck, they feel it, because it's working. They're not feeling you trying to do it, they're feeling you do it. And there's a, if you get, if you go, if you, a good way to feel this is to go into a BJJ and just grapple, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and, and, and grapple with a, one of the guys in there who's, doesn't really hold back as much, you know. Get to feel the ego a little bit of one of these guys when they're they're not. Maybe they're sort of the lower belts. Maybe a white belt who's been doing it for six months or something, and he's still got kind of some trying to prove something. He's not putting his stick fingers in your eyes. He's not kneeing your groin or anything like that or biting you. But you get to feel this kind of wow, oh, man. Being, you get to feel that in the head. <coughs> Big shit wind, and I'm starting to appreciate these grappling type things more and more. So, again, the position is grabbed, my arms are on the outside, his head is unavailable for a headbutt. We're gonna, even the eye is not that accessible because he tucked it in there and all of that. So, I'm gonna take this hand, lean back as much as I can, give me, so go high up on my back as well. That's it. So, because if he's really low down my back, so go lower down again, I can just sort of lean back and I'm in. Yeah, so if it goes higher up, I can't get away. So, and the head's unavailable for headbutt. So, on the other side, there we go. So, from here, take my hand as a fist or open hand, swim it across his face, get it just in the, into position, and then beam to the cheek. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Any, any question on the eye or uh, and that stuff? So is there any preference uh, which way around you? Brush against their face, swim against their face. Like I would say back of the yeah. hand across their face because it's, it's knuckles, right? I mean, because if, oh, okay. if you can, do a closed fist and punch your way through. Mm -hmm. um, but he had it he's so tight that it didn't feel very accessible, so I did like that. But even just that, it's unpleasant. So it's not about getting your hand in to push their face away? No, because you, no, you know what? If we, it's, it's like this. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as I don't push him away mm -hmm. with my arm, I just straighten it out. Mm -hmm. I don't push him away with my hand, I just swim across. You know, there's something about just going past and through people that's it's more effective than trying to yeah. go into them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Alright, let's give that a go.